Welcome to Finished Work International Ministries, a ministry that is on the cutting edge, changing lives around the world. As you let God in today and apply the word, expect a divine encounter and supernatural transformation. It is impossible for you to be defeated when you have the revelation of the will of God. It is impossible for situations to subdue you when you walk in understanding of what God is saying to you. Let the finished work of Jesus determine what you pray. When God is your source, you don't look back. You keep looking forward. You keep trusting. Him. God, I trust you. Here's Apostle Faith Man Obuena. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we just lift you up today, God. Lord, we just praise your name, God. Lord, we just come to you, God, Lord, asking you, God, to give us increase, Lord. Give us increase as your word goes forth today, God. Lord, and we open our hearts, Lord. We open our minds, Lord, to receive, God, what you would say, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good morning, y'all. Good morning. <laughs> um, so we've been doing a series on uh, your kingdom assignment. And so we're just going to continue on that today. And um, the message that the Lord has laid on my heart is, are you doing what God has called you to do outside of the will of God? Um, you know, are you doing what God has called you to do outside of God's will? And, you know, so God has a purpose. God has a purpose and an assignment for each one of our lives. Um, and, you know, it's through Jesus that we know that purpose and we know that assignment, the plan that God has for our lives. Um, thank you, uh, in John chapter 15, verse 15, Jesus was talking to the disciples and he said that the Lord no longer calls us servant because a servant doesn't know what the master is doing, but instead he calls us friend. So it's through Jesus that we are able to know God's plan for our life, God's will for our life. But just because we know God's plan for our life doesn't give us the, <clears throat> the right to take things into our own hands. <clears throat> we have to um, allow the leading of his spirit to lead us and to guide us through every situation so we could stay under his protection. Um, you know, my daughters, um, they're four years old and almost two years old. And, um, you know, I tell them one day I was telling them, I said, uh, I said, y'all, y'all get y'all shoes on, you know, let's get ready to go. We're going to go to your grandma house. And so, you know, at that point I had revealed to them what we was going to do, but the only instruction I gave them was to, put their shoes on and so they began to put their shoes on and then they began to run to the door and unlock the door and run out the door but I wasn't ready for them to go out the door and you know by by doing by going ahead of me they now had stepped out of you know my will and I stepping out of my will it was out of my protection. So if they go out that door without me, then I'm not there to protect them from what's on the other side of the door because I wasn't ready to move yet. You know, somebody could have been on the other door to snatch them. Um, you know, they could have run out to the street into danger where, you know, where cars are. And, um, you know, this is the same thing that, that applies with our life, with God in our life. Um, he, he reveals to us what he's gonna do but we still have to follow the leading of his instruction, uh, the leading of his will. And if we do not do that, then now we're, we're stepping ahead of God and we're no longer under his protection, even though we might be doing what he said that we was going to do. Um, so, you know, just because 
just because the Lord, you know, revealed to you that, um, you know, he's going to be a business person and, uh, you know, he's going to make millions in business. And then you decide to start go running uh, credit card scams and you become a millionaire off of that. You know, that wasn't in his will. Sure, you became the millionaire that he said you was going to be in business, but it was out of his will. And so now you don't have his protection. So, you know, you're not protected from going to jail. You know, you're not protected even if somebody was to come to uh, try to harm you and hurt you because you have scammed them out of your money. So we have to be careful and make sure that that we are doing what God is leading us to do at the time he leads us to do it. Um, in uh, in first Kings chapter 19, let's turn to first Kings chapter 19. And uh, it's an example here of what's, what we're talking about. Um, First King chapter 19, verse 15, it says, the Lord said to him, and he was talking to Elijah, the Lord said to him, go return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you arrive, anoint, anoint Hazel as king over Syria. Now, we're talking about Hazel here. The Lord told Elijah to anoint Hazel to become king over Syria. And, and we never actually see where Elijah actually anoints Hazel to become king over Syria. But we do know that once God speaks forth his word, it never comes back to him void. So Hazel was anointed to be king over Syria. And, uh, you know, we never see, we never hear another mention of Hazel until we get to 2 Kings uh, chapter eight. So let's go to 2 Kings chapter eight. And, uh, you know, I encourage you guys to follow along. Um, you know, I just find it that when you follow along, you could, you could learn better, uh, you know. So in 2 Kings chapter 8, I'm going to start at verse 10, but uh, just to catch you up on what's going on. Uh, so Hazel, he had been serving under uh, the king of Syria, uh, King Ben-Hadad. And ben had fallen under sickness and disease. He became sick. So he sent Hazel to Elisha to ask him, to give him offerings and to ask him, would he survive the sickness? You know, would he come out of the sickness to live? And so, uh, you know, that's the point we're at. So we're going to uh, start at 2 Kings chapter 8, verse 10. And it says, and I'm reading from the New King James Version. And it says, and Elijah said to him, go say to him, you shall certainly recover. However, the Lord has shown me that he will really die. Then he set his countenance in a stare until he was ashamed. And the man of God wept. And Hazel said, why is my Lord weeping? He answered, because I know the evil that you will do to the children of Israel. Their strongholds you will set on fire and their young men you will kill with the sword and you will dash their children and rip open their women with child. So Hazel said, but what is your servant, a dog, that he should do this gross thing? Now, uh, you know, what I noticed is, you know, now the Lord has just revealed to Elijah that, that, you know, Hazel was going to become king of Syria. You know, this was the will that he had for his life. And, you know, Elijah, he began to weep. Um, and when he began to weep, uh, you know, Hazel was like, you know, what's wrong? Why are you weeping? 
and Elijah told him all the wickedness that he was going to do. And I believe this is the point that Hazel allowed the enemy to penetrate his heart. He allowed the, what the plan of God was for his life. He allowed the enemy to come in and to, and to penetrate his heart and to change those and to change his heart in that plan. Because instead of saying, you know, why would I ever do such, such wicked thing? You know, I could, why would I do something so evil to people? His response was, how can I ever get in a position that I could do something like that? He wasn't worried about why he would ever do something so wicked. He was more concerned with how could he ever get in a position so great to even have that authority. And, and I believe this is the moment where Hazel allowed, um, you know, evil to enter his heart. Um, in in thank you, God. In um, in James, in James chapter one. Verse 14, it says, each of us are carried away by our own evil desires. And then we are, and, and, and we are carried away by our own evil desires and then we are enticed. So at this point, he, he was carried away by his own evil desires. You know, God had a plan for his life, but he, he was carried away by his own evil desires. Um, let's keep reading. Um, verse 14. And it says, then he departed from Elijah and came to his master who said to him, what did Elijah say to you? And he answered, he told me you would surely recover. But it happened on the next day that he took a thick cloth and dipped it in water and spread it over his face so that he died and Hazel reigned in his place. So now, the word of the Lord has been fulfilled. You know, the plan that God had for his life was fulfilled. Hazel became king over Syria, but he did it out of God's will. So this is a prime example of doing what God has called you to do, but being out of his will. And surely it was out of God's will because it's not God's will for anyone to have to be murdered. And, and, and Hazel took, he, he manipulated the situation. He took it into his own hands to say, okay, well, God said, this is going to happen to me. So let me make it happen myself. And, 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 and we don't, and we don't have to do that for God. You know, God doesn't need us to manipulate a situation in order to make what he has said happen. It's going to happen to happen. And, you know, this, this word, it, it really comes from uh, correction out of my life. Um, you know, the Lord had revealed to some things to me that, that he was going to do in my life. And, you know, naturally, when, when you hear things that are beyond your expectation, you think, um, how am I going to get from here to here? You know, and, and if you're not careful, you can begin to try and manipulate the situation to try to say, OK, well, maybe maybe if I if I move this right here, then then this will happen. But see, God never asked you to do that. God didn't reveal to you what he was going to do in your life so that you could try and go in and create the pathway for it. He revealed it to you because he calls us friends and you tell your friends what you're going to do. So, you know, the scripture says God goes before us and he goes behind us. So God doesn't need us to try to, he doesn't reveal things to us so we could take it into our own hands and, and, and try to create the own pathway. The Lord goes before us and, and makes every crooked, crooked path straight. So we don't have to, uh, to manipulate a situation to try and fulfill the word of God, because once we do that, we are now stepping out of his will. And, you know, that's, that's the biggest mistake you can make is to think that I'm doing what God um, has called me to do. 
and you're not doing it in his will. We have everything that we do, we have to make sure that we're doing it in his will. And the only way that we stay in his will is to stay by the leading of his spirit and, and by the following of his instructions. You know, we can't get ahead of God. Um, and so, um, you know, God has given us examples through Jesus. He gives us examples of how to, how to deal with situations. Um, you know, before Jesus ministry ever began, it says, let's, let's go to Matthew, Matthew chapter four, Matthew chapter four. Before Jesus, in Matthew chapter four, it says, then Jesus was led up by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Now Jesus, he was led by the spirit to be tempted. But we know temptation doesn't come from God. In scripture tells us that there's no evil in God. God doesn't tempt us, but Jesus was still led by the spirit to be tempted by the devil. And I think that's because the Lord was giving us an example of how to deal with temptation when we come up against it, how we're supposed to deal with temptation, how we're supposed to face it. And so if we go down further, uh, Matthew chapter four, verse 10, verse eight, let's start at verse eight. It says, again, the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to them, all these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, away with you, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only you shall serve. You see, Jesus knew what was written. He knew God's will for his life. He knew his inheritance. And, and what the enemy will try to do is, when God reveals his plan to our life, the enemy will always try to come with something counterfeit. He'll try to come with this, this, this counterfeit promise, this, this, um, you know, this facade and, and try to get us to be deceived into taking what he is offering instead of waiting on the promise of the Lord. But Jesus showed us how we are supposed to deal with temptation. You know, he told him it is written, you know, he knew his inheritance. He knew the assignment, the will that God had for his life. He knew that if he followed the leading of God, that he was already to receive the kingdoms of the earth. And, and so when the enemy came with this, this counterfeit promise, this fake promise, he was he 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 knew who he was in in, in the Lord. He knew his identity. So he said, no, you know, Satan, flee from me. It, it is written. You know, I know my inheritance. And that's the same way we're supposed to stand up against the devil. When, when the devil comes against us and, and, and tries to offer these things, and, and, and we know, I know what God has said about my life. I know my inheritance in his word. We have to stand strong and on the leading of the Lord and wait and, and, and believe and trust in God that, that what he said he would do, he would do. Because if not, we will we will fall out of the will of God through deception and through the deceit of the enemy. And, and, and this is the trick that that Satan tries to 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 pull over our, our lives, to pull over our eyes is to trick us out of out of the will of God through through deception, through manipulation. And, and, and we begin to move and we think that, oh, OK, well, I, I'm doing what. I'm doing what God called me to do, but 
but yes, you're not doing it inside of his will. So we have to be aware of, of, of counterfeit, uh, of counterfeit promises, you know, promises that, that, you know, and, and that's the thing about counterfeit. If you ever seen counterfeit money, it almost looked good. It all it looked good from a distance, but you get close to it. You you if you examine it, you say, "Wait a minute, this fake." And, and, and that's the thing. That's what we have to. That's what we have to uh, use our wisdom, and we have to use the wisdom that God has given us to know that 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 counterfeit is not the same as as what's real. You know, counterfeit tries its best to 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 look real, um, and if we're not careful, taking counterfeit things will hurt you. Uh, I'm about to tell y'all something that I ain't told nobody because it's embarrassing. <laughs> but you know, I, uh, uh, a couple years ago, I was in school, and um, I had these shoes, and and. And man, they looked nice. They, oh my God, these shoes was nice. And, and I wanted them bad, so I, I bought them. I, I even bought two pair of them. And uh, I should have known they was fake. <laughs> the signs was all, the signs was all around me that these shoes was fake. They was counterfeit shoes. But you know, I wanted them so I wanted it so bad that I ignored it. And, and, and that's how we do sometimes. You want something so bad that you ignore the stuff that's that's common sense. You should have known. So the first thing was uh the shoes, they was cheap. You know, they was cheaper than what they cost. So I called myself getting a deal. I said, okay, I'm gonna get two pair. Ah, I had a red pair and I had a blue pair. I said, okay, yes. <laughs> And then, and so that was the first sign right there. And then the second sign was that the person I got it from, they were selling them out like, it was like this out the back of a trunk kind of deal. So, you know, I didn't even go to the store. So, you know, it's just like, oh my God, like, like, how did you not see that this wasn't real? So, you know, I, I you know, the signs was there. And so what happened was, you know, I bought the shoes, I was wearing them, I felt good. And 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 one day, uh, so okay, so in order to make sense, I gotta tell you, the shoes was Jordans. They were some Jordans, if y'all know what Jordans are. And so I was walking, I was just walking, you know, around campus, and uh I heard somebody say. They said, those ain't Air Jordans, those Air Gordons. And oh my God. And I, I don't know who the person was. Oh my God. But I was so embarrassed. I just kept walking. You know, two things crossed around my mind. I was so embarrassed that I could have fought. I, I like it, 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 it made me mad. But at the same time, it hurt me. It hurt me because I knew I said, man, I done man, these ain't real. And it was at that moment that I found out like, oh my gosh, these, oh my gosh, I got, I done got scammed. These are, these not even a real deal. And, and now they talking about me. It, it, it brought her, I, I was really embarrassed. Uh, you know, cause some, you know, some people might not care, but you know, I care. I thought I had the real stuff. And, and, and you know, so dealing with counterfeit, it could hurt you. You know, and, you know, the situation could have got more out of hand than that. You know, if I was to, if I could have, you know, been led to go, you know, punch the guy or something, because, you know, that's what I was feeling. You know, it could, the situation could have evolved from there, all because I took the counterfeit and I didn't, I didn't recognize the, the signs that was there. I didn't really pay attention. You know, I wanted it so bad that I didn't pay attention to what was going on. So, you know, I said that all to say, you know, uh, we have to, we have to really recognize, you know, what's, you know, the situations on going on around us, you know, it, it's nothing, you know, God's burden 
And God's joke, it's not, it's not hard. It's like, you know, and God is not a God of confusion. So, so anything that we're dealing with that involves God, it, uh, you know, it's, if, if it's not of God, we're going to, it'll be revealed to us. And, and you can't want something so bad. You can't want what God has uh, uh, desired for your life so bad that now you allow the enemy to come in and to, and to let you trade it in for a false desire. And, and you know, this is what the enemy tries to, to do to us. And, um, you know, so, you know, we just have to, to focus, focus on the Lord, focus on the Lord, you know, keep your eyes on God, keep your eyes on the, the promises of God, you know, don't don't be deceived at your situation. Don't be led uh, astray by the temptation of, of of the enemy, by the temptations of our of our own de evil desires. You know, as we keep our eyes focused on the Lord, um, God will lead our path, and, and everything will come to us in due time, in in His perfect timing. You know, it may not be right when we want it, but you know, God has the timing for our life as he has saw fit. And, you know, I just I just prophesied to you guys today that 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 you will not be led astray and that you will not be led down the wrong paths. You know, I, I, I prophesy peace coming to your lives right now. The peace of the Lord is coming upon you to make decisions and to do the will of God and to do what God has called you to do. I speak confidence over your life, to, to be confident in your walk with God, to walk with your head, head held high, and to know that every movement and, 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 and leading of you that you're following is the leading of the Spirit. In the name of Jesus, we will not be deceived, we will not be tricked out of our inheritance by the enemy, and we will not fall victim to, to manipulation and tactics of the enemy in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. I just pray. I just pray and just thank you, Lord, for this message, God, that you have brought forth today, Lord. Lord, we just thank you, God, for your word today, God. Lord, we just ask that this message continue, God, to, to touch our hearts and to remind us, Lord, in times, Lord, where we are looking for answers, Lord, that we will remember, Lord, your word through the Holy Spirit, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. I pray for peace, God, in our lives, Lord, peace to make decisions, Lord, peace to do your will, God, and peace to, to follow the leading of your spirit, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we just give you glory. We just give you praise and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, amen.